All right, we've got a Vox AC15 Custom Classic. Symptom, won't power on. Change fuse, still won't power on. Examine foot switch, foot switch doesn't work. But we'll put the foot switch to the side and look at this powering on issue first and changing, change the fuse. Uh, a lot of times this is the situation where people get frustrated because I fix their amp and there is a bill. And when they see what's on the itemized list of services I did, they're like, you charged me to do that? that? I could have done that. Well, that's true. You could have a lot of the time. People tend not to, or they tend not to do it right. So this video is not to make fun of anyone. This video is so that if you have this kind of problem, maybe you can fix it yourself. Uh, number one, this amp has three fuses. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. There's one in here on the board. It's board mounted. It's a little five by 20 millimeter. It's a 6.3 amp. It's in the heater supply. Second of all, right here, there's the HT, the high tension supply for the B plus. And that's the one the guy changed. And that is supposed to be a 250 milliamp fuse. He put in a five amp fuse. So if there was a problem with anywhere in the B plus or the power tubes or anything, that five amp fuse would not blow and would in fact make sure that something else caught on fire. This amp, like many, many amps, also has a hidden fuse. And it is the mains fuse. Let me put this HT fuse back and then I'll show you where the hidden fuse goes. Here is the IAC connector. And like many amps these days, the IAC connector has a little drawer in it and it slides out. You get a little flathead screwdriver and you press down on a little tab on the drawer and the whole thing will slide out. It's a little hard to do the rear panel in place, but it will do that. On most amps, the IC connection is more visible. It's easier to do this. But when you see it, it's obvious. So here's a little drawer. And here's the blown fuse that's in there. It's got a little burn spot on it. You can see it right there. And that fuse is a 1.25 amp, which is correct for this model, I believe. Let me go into my big box O fuses. It's back in the holder and it goes in the, the, the drawer slides in the IC so that little tabs up and that's the tab where you press with the screwdriver. Let's go in there. I have got to get bifocals at some point. All right, so let's plug a power cable into that IC connector and we'll see if that, uh, 5 amp HT fuse did any damage whatsoever. And I'm going to turn on my current limiter for this just to see if something's wrong in the amp causing this main fuse to blow. Yep, sure is. It's a big flash of light from my light bulb limiter, and you hear that? All right, that sounds to me like a rectifier circuit is failing and the one of the diodes has probably failed and it's just making awful noises so at this point this is going to be a legitimate unquestioned repair but sometimes a fuse just fails because fuses like to fail and people don't realize that there's a hidden fuse like here and they will change it out or they will put in a 5 amp fuse instead of a 250 milliamp fuse uh, 250 milliamps is 0.25 amps, so 5 amps is way too much. And that can actually cause more damage than the amp would have had if just left alone. So I will get in here and diagnose uh, the root cause of all this and let the owner know uh, what that repair estimate would be and see if it gets greenlit. And once I, I can narrow it down and show you guys exactly what it is, I will add this in a little tag at the end here. All right, yeah, using my meter to measure diodes. This one here measures fine. This one has gone, uh, gone the way of all flesh. And uh, diodes are very inexpensive 
and it's relatively easy to change them, even on this model. But it does involve removing all the pots and jacks and a lot of screws and carefully pulling the board down. So let me get that to focus for you. It's not as easy as it would be on a, uh, a vintage Vox or a, well, that would have a rectifier tube, or a, a, an old fender or something where you got to change the diodes and the bias supply. Kind of there they are, or you can just take out the bias card to do it right. But either way, about this five cent uh, part is causing all the problems. And I want to repeat that it is a very good thing that the owner did not know how to change this fuse. Because if he had changed this fuse and plugged this amp into the wall without a current limiter and had that five amp fuse here for the HT, which is right, right after these faulty diodes, a lot more damage could have happened. So, uh, real quick, just out of interest, let me open up the back of the uh, foot switch and see what's up with that. Well, this is another good tip to give to amp owners. This is the foot switch that comes with this, and I open it up, and both switches are working just fine. All the connections are just fine, and uh, everything measures fine here. And, you know, until I can power this amp safely, I won't be able to test it, test it. But I, I really do think that uh, the problem is likely to be in the cable, uh, which is a tip ring sleeve, you know, stereo quarter inch cable that just goes from this jack to this jack. And guess what the owner did not include with the amp? So, I will be able to confirm that this is working. And I'll be able to confirm that this is working because I can manually switch it here from the rear. Uh, but uh, without that cable, I can't necessarily fix his amp. So, fuses, cables, all these things are important. Please... Uh, if you have a problem with the foot switch, bring the cable. If you're going to change a fuse, use the absolute correct value. And uh, this is the, what the drawer, how the drawer type IC connector uh, works with it, a little hidden fuse. Very, very common in amps. So maybe this will help someone save them some money. And uh, the input jack is loose as hell too. That's not gonna sound great, but that's a totally other problem. Sounds like it feels like someone took it off and lost with a compressor washer. I guess I'll show that to you while we got this out here. So here's the input jack, which always always comes loose on this model. The uh, plastic nose jacks just aren't the best to begin with. Let me loosen it. But what invariably happens is that people either put them back on at an angle, stripping the threads, or they lose the little compression washers on, on the other side, which are really what holds it in place. All right. Huh, this one doesn't... Sorry, didn't mean to kick the tripod out of the way. This one doesn't have a compression washer. It's supposed to make flush contact with the metal of the chassis, and it is not, which is going to cause all kinds of noise problems with this app. Once I get the uh, issue of the diodes fixed and all that corrosion needs to be cleaned. This has semi damaged threads and I suspect that nut was just put on at an angle and forced. So let me line it up properly. So it's perpendicular, I'm sorry, parallel to the surface of the top panel and see if it'll tighten then. Because if it's at an angle, it'll never tighten. All right, so that's what was happening. They just had it partially cross-threaded so that it was at a at an angle and not going flush. I'll have to remove that and clean all those little metal surfaces before I can call this amp done. But this is a host of minor things uh, that can uh, add up to a very inexpensive repair, a relatively inexpensive repair, as in he, just the diodes, or if this thing had been powered on with that 5 amp fuse, it would have probably approached the value of the amp to fix. So food for thought.